Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man stepping up on short nose to go across the world fighting New Zealand UFC Fight Night 110 on June the 10th. Zach Otto. Zach, I appreciate time. It was about May 18th that we found out this was the fight that was happening. So uh, how long did you actually know before it was actually revealed by the UFC? Um, I just found out on Wednesday. So I was actually at practice on Wednesday morning-ish. And then uh, the guy that I own the gym with, my business partner, one of my coaches, Jay, came in and he said, hey, check your phone. Your managers are trying to get a hold of you. So I went and looked at the phone and saw that there was an opportunity, uh, not too short a notice, you know, but it's definitely uh, a late replacement. Um, and I looked at the matchup. My weight's in a good area right now and everything. So it made sense. And I was able to take the fight and get the fight. So pretty excited about it. Would you label this, was it a, a no-brainer to take this fight? Uh, he hasn't fought in like two years. I'm pretty familiar with everybody in my weight class that signed. Um, I did, I was familiar with him, but I, I hadn't watched one of his fights in quite some time. And, um, I just had to kind of like refresh my memory a little bit on, on who this guy was because he hasn't fought in over two years. Um, but yeah, shortly after I got the call, I really liked the matchup and I'm ready to go. So um, you know, I train all the time. I'm, I'm coaching and co-owning a gym and stuff, so it, I don't really get much layoff time. I'm, I'm here training every day, sharpening my skills. And, you know, when the, the phone call comes in and it's a matchup you like, you got to take it. There's a lot of guys signed to the roster, and if you want to stay active, you have to be willing to take those fights on a little bit shorter notice than ideal. And it was February 2015, the last time uh, Kumimoto had fought. That was a loss against Neil Magny. What are the biggest challenges when you're you're facing a guy that the, the last film you have on him was from two years ago? That's really the hardest thing. I mean, he's obviously a skilled fighter. Um, everybody in the UFC is. Um, you know, he's, he's uh, a, a well-rounded veteran that's been around the sport for a long time. And the hardest thing is just knowing or, or trying to, to know what kind of fighter is going to show up. You know, is he a, a completely new evolved version of himself or is uh, he a kind of on the way out? He's 36, hasn't fought in a couple of years. You know, I'm preparing for the toughest matchup I've ever had. And I'm, I'm preparing for a, a newly evolved and refreshed fighter that I have to fight. But um, that's kind of the, the most difficult part is um, the preparation. It, it's been some time since we have seen you. So how are you a different fighter uh, now as opposed to uh, back at the end of last year? Well, in the past, uh, I've lost three other times in my pro career, and I've lost once as an amateur. And after all four of those other times, I took at least six months before I fought again, and I came out a newly evolved fighter and completely dominated in my next fight after a loss. And I plan on making it a fifth time in a row. So, um, I, have definitely been working on my game. Um, can't, uh, say everything that I've been working on, but hopefully you'll see it. Why six months? What, what, is, what is, why have you decided that six months is the appropriate timetable to, to be in the gym before you actually take another fight? Yeah, um, I mean, this time I really didn't have a choice. I had a wrist injury. I uh, I actually fought my last fight with a complete tear in my wrist, and I didn't even know it. Um, you know, we battle all the time with these little nagging injuries, and you tape it up and you keep going. Um, but it just wasn't getting better. So after I got an MRI done on it, I found out that I had a complete snap in one of my ligaments and my wrist. I, I didn't have very much grip strength loss of mobility, um, very unstable wrist. And I had to give it a little bit of time for that to heal before I could kind of be back in the rotation, even available to take a fight. So it wasn't like a planned six months this time. It just kind of happened that way. In the past, um, I just kind of feel like that's a good amount of time to actually reset from your previous fight, you know, take a little bit of time off, um, reset a little bit mentally and then get back to work on on learning some new things polishing up those new things and then putting it back in you know uh, mixing it into your game and then getting ready for a fight you know takes about two months so i don't know six months just kind of seems like a, a good model to go by as far as uh evolving and 
getting it in your own repertoire. I take since you have this fight here on June the 10th that you did not go to Las Vegas last weekend for the fight retreat. Is that correct? Yeah, no, I didn't. Uh, that, that was kind of one of the things that I was maybe wish-washy about when taking the fight is because I was going to be leaving in less than 48 hours for this retreat for four days and, you know, sitting on these lectures and stuff. I really wanted to go. I wanted to get that information and see what that was like. But with a fight this close and, you know, I, uh, I have some weight to cut and all that kind of stuff, um, I didn't want to go and distract myself by going to this athlete retreat. So once I found out that I could get out of doing that, then I for sure, I was like, yep, let's, let's do the fight. So I didn't go, but my teammate Rick did, and he let me know a little bit about some of the stuff that they were going through, and hopefully I can do that sometime in the future. You mentioned about the weight cut. How uh, how do you cut weight when you know you've got to fly? I mean, what what's that? Probably a 16, 17 hour flight. Yeah, I uh, I have a four hour flight from Chicago to LA, and then from there I have a little layover, and then from LA to New Zealand it's going to be uh, about twelve and a half. Um, I did that last time going to Brazil. I think it was maybe about eleven hour flight. So. Uh, kind of get in the groove of that last August on vacation. I went to Greece. That was another 10 plus hour fight flight. So kind of get in the routine of those long flights. Um, I can't really sleep on a plane, so I'll have to kind of adjust my schedule that way, but, um, it won't be anything I'm not used to. In, in terms of, uh, going over there and, and fighting, uh, this, this fight here, what, what do you, what do you see uh, as the path to victory coming for you? Do you see it going down a certain way? I mean, obviously, I know you're not going to give me your game plan, but do you kind of, as you visualize it, you always visualize it going down a certain way? My last three fights have been decisions, and before that, I had like 12 out of 12 wins were finishes, um, especially the last two being split decisions. I just... I really don't like leaving the judges' hands at all, and I don't really know uh, how it's going to happen and what round or, or whatever, but I'm really, really looking to get back on this finishing streak So, and start that again. I know a decision is still a win, but some guys will say that when you win by decision, you kind of almost feel like you, you lost in a way. Do you at all feel that way? It really depends on how the fight went. Um you know, if if you didn't really show your best performance and you eked out a win, then it's not very rewarding. But if you completely dominated the fight, um, my last fight on the regional level before I got signed, I just could not finish the guy. But it was a clear domination in every round. So those feel pretty rewarding because it's not like you just came out, you know, uh, McGregor versus Aldo, 13 second, bam, and then nobody really knows who the better fighter was. Um, so sometimes when it does go decision, you completely dominate somebody, you're able to show your skill set, able to really show that you are a better fighter than somebody else. And those are rewarding too, but I definitely just want to get back on that finishing streak and I want to, uh, maybe get one of those bonuses. That'd be really nice. You mentioned about uh, your gym business. Is there some fighters inside that gym that, uh, aren't getting the publicity now, but you're like, man, you guys need to start paying attention because these are the guys that are upcoming. Uh, one, she's, uh, her name's Leah Letson. She's, uh, signed to Invicta. She just had a vicious head K knockout, head kick knockout in, uh, in Invicta in January. Um, she's on just KOing people, a big win streak. Um, the thing is with her, she just got deployed overseas. Uh, she's signed, uh, she's with the Air National Guard. Mm-hmm. So she's over there serving our country, and when she gets back, I'm very positive that she'll get signed right after. Probably will need a, a, a fight on the regional level to knock the rust off a little bit because she's gone for six months. But she's a future world champ, guaranteed. And then uh, coming up along with, with her, we have tons of guys that are uh, around my weight class and then also uh, a little bit lighter than me, so around 35 and 45 just total studs that are coming up. So they're all working their way early in their pro career, um, you know, 2-0, and 3-0 and as pros right now. But another year or two, our gym is going to be all over the UFC. But, of course, your fight is coming here June 10th, UFC Fight Night 110 from New Zealand. Zach, as always, I appreciate time and good luck here uh, in your fight.
I appreciate it. Good seeing you again.